Well, as we approach Vancouver's 135th anniversary, you may look to our buildings or facades for hints of our city's past, but sometimes it takes a little more digging to expose our storied past. That's what Eve Lazarus has done. The Vancouver author and journalist has combed the archives and put together a fascinating and entertaining book called Vancouver Exposed, searching for the city's hidden history. Hello. Hi. Oh, when did you realize there were so many little known stories about our city? Oh, it started after my first book at home with history came out back in 2007. And it was all about um, Vancouver's underbelly stories of bootleggers and madams and corruption. And uh, once the book was finished, people kept sending me stories that added on. And, you know, they'd say, oh, my grandmother was a madam or Uncle Charlie was a bootlegger. <laughs> and they'd send me photos from the, the family album and I had nowhere to put them. So I ended up starting a blog called Every Place Has a Story, just really as a repository for other people's history. And it just added on and added on. And I, I realized last year that I had about 500 posts and mm. photos and all sorts of stuff. And uh, I wanted to put them somewhere else. Wow. Well, let's dig into some of those stories. Most people probably don't realize there was a second Hotel Vancouver. Uh, what happened to it? Well, yeah, most people don't realise there were three Hotel Vancouver's. The, the first one was on uh, Georgia and Granville Street and sat there till about 1916 when they built this second absolutely fabulous Hotel Vancouver. It was 16 storeys. It was um, the architecture was Italian Renaissance. It was ornate and elegant. It, it had um, uh, the exterior was sort of clad in terracotta gargoyles and it was just this magnificent uh, building with a rooftop and all sorts of things and uh, then in 1949 we pulled it down and we put up a parking lot for the mm. next 25 years. Wow do you know why it was pulled down? Yeah um, there was an arrangement with the third hotel Vancouver it was a CN hotel uh, CP owned the second hotel Vancouver and uh, the depression hit both were struggling, so they both went into the third. And part of the agreement was to pull down the second hotel, Vancouver, rather than use it, you know, for a museum or repurpose it in some other incredible way. Hmm. Uh, so it lasted uh, for a few more years when the Second World War veterans came back. They took it over as housing, and uh, it lasted as housing for a couple of years and then became a parking lot. Hmm. Hmm. What do we know about the, there was a steam train that crossed Hastings Street. Tell me about that. There were many steam trains that crossed Hastings Street. We had uh, the CPR passenger trains and freight trains, and they were coming from Waterfront Station, our current Waterfront Station, and they were going to their yards in False Creek, and they would have to cross Hastings Street to do it. So for years and decades, in fact, it just held up traffic, you know, the age-old Vancouver problem uh, <laughs> as the steam trains crossed Hastings Street. And it went right through to 1932 when we got the Dunsmere Tunnel, uh, which has now mm. been incorporated mm. into the SkyTrain line. Mm. And there were a, a number of big plans for the city that, that never came to be, like Project 200, um, a, a freeway through the city, as well as a, a waterfront development. Tell me about those two things. Oh, thank heavens. Uh, Project 200, it's been called the you know, most important thing that never happened to yeah. Vancouver because yeah. if yeah. it had gone ahead, we wouldn't recognise the city and, um, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. not in a good way. It was called Project 200 because it would have cost $200 million, which back in 1968 would have been you know, an incredible amount of money. And the plan was to take out all the buildings from Waterfront Station, Sinclair Centre, all the way to Woodward's on Hastings and Abbott and put in these massive developments. And uh, these freeways, three freeways would come through the city and out again. And uh, they would have taken out all of Chinatown, most of Strathcona, most of Gastown. Wow. And they wow. would have joined, one of them would have joined uh, Thurlow Street, which would have gone down to Brockton Point and there was plans to have a third crossing from Brockton Point over to North Vancouver uh, which just is so amazing to me 52 years later we still haven't got a third crossing 
but I'm very happy those plans didn't go ahead. And the only thing um, that did happen was at the bottom of Granville, 200 Granville used to be the Sun Building, uh, is there, and a giant parking lot. And uh, that was the beginning of Project 200. Mm, wow, like a huge difference it would have made, including taking out a lot of cultural icons in our city like Chinatown. Um, I, when I was reading your book, I found it really interesting, the history of the Crystal Pool. Um, tell me about that. The Crystal Pool, it's, it's now, of course, where the Aquatic um, Centre is now that uh, we all know, and, well, it's Sunset Beach. But back in 29, the, the plans were for this very, very swanky club called the Connaught Beach Club, and it was going to be a private club and it was going to have tennis clubs and a Turkish bath and a roof garden and a ballroom. So, you know, a pretty big deal. And then the Depression hit mm. and uh, they ran out of money. And so the only thing that they had partially finished was the pool. So the city of Vancouver took it over. And it, by 1939, it was operating as crystal pool. It was a salt water pool. And judging by the comments that I got on my blog after I wrote the post about it, thousands and thousands of Vancouverites learned to swim there wow. and wow. Uh, taught or trained by Percy Norman, who was apparently a very big deal back then. And the crystal pool lasted until about 1974, when we replaced it with the uh, Aquatic Centre. Hmm. Um, it's a really incredible book. I was just having a look at it uh, today. Um, what are some of your favourite stories um, from the book? Oh, I have to say one of the, my favourite ones is the world, if I've got this right, the World Belly Flop and Cannonball Diving Competition. Uh, the picture of uh, the hot air balloon floating across the pool is on the back of the book and there's a full page picture in, in the back. But it was basically started to promote the Bayshore Hotel. Uh, they built a very, very large fancy pool, outdoor pool, back in uh, 1975, and Tom Butler, their PR guy, came up with this crazy, crazy scheme to promote it, and he got up. Uh, Andre the Giant came from the States and participated and actually won that year, won the prize, the World Belly, uh, the World Belly Flop Prize. <laughs> and uh, it lasted for about four or five years, and it eventually moved to the Coach House Inn in North Vancouver, and that's where that photo was taken in 1979. And you've got this guy belly flopping out of the hot air balloon, breaking every safety violation you can imagine, <laughs> uh, to come in second only. And... Uh, after the story came out of my blog, I got this wonderful note from to uh, Trevor Rowe, and he said, that was my dad, Bill, Kamikaze wow. Bill, a logger from uh, Bellingham who was participating in the belly flop competition. And Trevor said he was very, very young at the time, but he remembers his dad stuffing these weights in the T-shirt so he would weigh in at 250 pounds and <laughs> be able to participate. <laughs> Such a fascinating history about our city right here. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And for everybody, once again, the book is called Vancouver Exposed, Searching for the City's Hidden History. Eve Lazarus, thank you so much for sharing this incredible history with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much.